Hello and welcome to today's video. So this is probably going to end up being a first chapter challenge but I'm not 100% sure yet. Basically I've gone back through, looked at my spreadsheets, I've never read a thriller. I never make time for them, I've never read one. Like I've read some crime and some mystery but never like a proper like intense thriller. So <laughs> I've found all of these out which are all thrillers and I've also got up on a different shelf two Lucy Foley's, two Lisa Jules, two Gillian Flynn's and one Paula Hawkins. So that's seven up there but they're ones that I think I'll probably actually want to try. So they're just up there on this shelf here and I feel like I am actually going to want to try these ones. So even though they're still in like the same thriller thing, I'm not really that interested in figuring out if I want to keep them or not, which is what I'm doing today, I haven't even said that. Basically, should I keep these or should I get rid of them? That's the question I'm asking. I think I do also own another thriller. I've got Revive, Reprive? I've got Reprive by James Han Matson, but that again, I know that that sounds really intriguing to me and I know I want to give that one a go. These are all ones that I found in random charity shops and picked up because for some reason I thought I read thrillers, but like I don't. So let's, uh, let's talk about them. So we've got The Storm uh, by Amanda Jennings. We've got The Little Red Chairs by Edna O'Brien. We've got One Little Lie by Sam Carrington. We've got The Split by Sharon Bolton. We've got The Glass House by Eve Chase. We've got The Hypnotist by Lars Kepler. And we've got The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. Now, why have I picked any of these up? Honestly, I can tell you two of them. So, Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. I've got another book on my TBR somewhere. Basically, I've got another book that I've started reading before and never finished, but I was really enjoying it when I did read it, called Zoo City, um, and it's by the same author, so when I saw this in a charity shop, so I picked it up. And then the other one, The Glass House, this was really popular, I picked it up when it was new, like someone must have read it straight away, and then taken it to the charity shop, and I think it's a really cool cover. So, that's why I picked them up, <laughs> but... Am I ever actually going to read them? I don't know. So, how do I figure this out? I think, first of all, I'm probably going to go and have a quick look on Goodreads at all of them. Look at the rating and also look if there's any reviews by either, like, in real life friends who, you know, like, I know, or just anyone that I follow on Goodreads who, like, I know I have a similar reading taste to. So that is the plan. So I guess I should just get started. So let's look up the storm. Okay, so this has got 3.85 as the rating. No reviews from friends. Oh, I know why I picked this one up because I've just seen where the setting is. It's set in Cornwall and I used to live in Cornwall. Um, so I'm guessing that's why I picked this one up. Yeah. Um. <laughs> This is dreadful. I don't know why I own these books and this just shouldn't be like this. Maybe I do keep this one and read it on a trip to Cornwall. To be honest, this doesn't sound interesting at all. Um, it's about domestic abuse to Hannah looks like she's in the perfect married, married to the perfect man, but Nathan controls everything. Um, years before in a tragic storm, Hannah did something or one night changed everything consequences um it's set in cornwall in the 90s and it's an exploration of power coercive control in a marriage where nothing is quite as it seems i'm going to read the first chapter and let you know what i think okay so i've read the prologue and half of chapter one Honestly, it's just not for me. Um, the writing was very detailed. You know, every element of everything, which I just don't need. Um, and there's also a dog. And I already got the feeling that something's gonna happen to the dog. And the dog was the only interesting part. And that's not at all what the book was about. I'm being overly negative, which I am aware, but like, I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm never gonna pick this up. And 
to be realistic with all these books i do need to allow myself to be negative so i can just accept that but yeah i'm i'm not gonna read this i wasn't enjoying it I, it didn't seem bad it just didn't seem like a writing style that i could gel with to be honest and the story itself doesn't intrigue me so i'm gonna be saying goodbye to the storm next up we've got the little red chairs when a man who calls himself a faith healer arrives in a small west coast irish village the community is soon under the spell of this charismatic stranger from the balkans one woman in particular fidelma mcbride becomes enfrailed in a fatal attraction that leads to unimaginable consequences i just I'm just not feeling it honestly. Look, obviously at some point I read that and thought it was good and honestly I think it's when I realised I've got hardly any thrillers on my shelf and I always want to have a couple of every genre just so, you know, I can always like grab one if I fancy that. And also I have a TBR game so if that genre came up I'd want to be able to fulfil the prompt. But this is silly to be quite honest. Let's have a look at Goodreads. It's got 3.25 which, not great. Apparently the summary gives half of the uh, book away. Oh, okay. Well, I've just read further on on Goodreads. It looks like this is a later edition, and they have taken most of the summary off. This is a, it was only the uh, yeah. Okay. I don't even think this is a thriller. <laughs> okay. Well, this is in my thriller pile. Apparently, it's historical fiction based around the war. Has anyone reviewed it? <laughs> no i'm gonna get rid of this one so i've just read a couple of reviews as well and apparently there's like on the page sexual violence like detailed for no necessary reason this one review is saying that review's giving it three stars so yeah I i'm not even going to attempt to start reading this because i don't think it was obvious from the back what it was about i thought this was a thriller reading that little back bit it's not i'm gonna just say bye i don't even need to read the first chapter that's going gone next one we've got one little lie uh this one i have actually read the back of again more recently and it does still sound interesting so we're going to read the back together and you're going to tell me what you think as well my name is alice and my son is a murderer deborah's son was killed four years ago alice's son is in prison for the crime deborah would give anything to have her boy back and alice would do anything to right her son's wrongs Driven by guilt and the need for redemption, Alice has started a support group for parents with troubled children, but as the network begins to grow, she seems discouraged just how easy it is for one little lie to spiral out of control. They call it mother's intuition, but can you ever fully know your own child? And just how far would you go to defend them? A twisting, unnerving thriller about the price of love and the unthinkable things we do to protect our children. Perfect for fans of Cara Hunter and Laura Marshall. Never heard of either of them, so that's not helpful. Um, the premise sounds interesting, but I, I'm going to look at re reviews. I think the problem I'm thinking I'm going to have with this one is like I don't give a crap about children, and I don't think apparently the characters from this book are in other books by the author, and it's not gone into detail. So it's got a 3.7 rating, which isn't dreadful. Has anyone I follow rated it? No. So people are saying it's confusing. Not enough detail, but a lot of details. No tension. Not exciting. Okay, so it's a lot of two or three stars, which honestly, like I don't want to read a two or three star book. I want to read good books that I'm going to enjoy. I think I am going to try the first chapter just because the back of it does sound like it could be good. Um, it does look like it's got multiple perspectives and okay so we've got a prologue and we've got chapter one from Alice and chapter two from Connie. Is it just Alice and Connie that we've got in here? Alice. Okay it looks like quite a bit later on we get chapters from a Deborah as well. Um, I'm going to read the prologue chapter one and chapter two and see what I think about it but not having high hopes. I think it's going to be quite slow and it's very already trying to be like whoa like shock you surprise you and like you're only two chapters in and it's nothing new from what you know on the back so I don't uh, like I don't understand it. I don't think I like the writing Honestly, I just don't find it interesting. The first two chapters haven't interested me and the prologue is like 
nothing to do with the first chapters it was literally just the what do you call him coroner the prologue was like the coroner giving this evaluation of how the person died in court so the other person like the murderer was there maybe it could be interesting but it's not for me honestly i think a book over grips you it doesn't and this is not gripping me and i just have to be honest with that like yeah it feels really crap because it's now three in a row um and i really want to like some of these uh we'll see we'll see the next book to look at is the split the reason i think i might actually like this one is it's remote it's um she's got nowhere left to hide a year ago felicity lloyd fled england to a remote island escaping her past and the man she once loved can she keep running her whole life and now he's coming for her. Freddie Lloyd has served time for murder and now he wants her back. Wherever she is, he won't stop until he finds her. Will he be able to track her to the end of the earth? Together they'll find themselves trapped and in danger. Who will survive? The like crime books and like mystery books that I've read, the more like isolated and the less people there are, I seem to really enjoy that and that seems to be something that I enjoy in them. I think this one could be good. I've looked at Goodreads, it's got 3.88. No one I follow has rated it, but the reviews look really good, even when I sort them from like newest to oldest. They're like a couple of three stars, quite a lot of four stars and a couple of five stars. So like that makes me think it is actually still good, even though it's been out a couple of years. Obviously when it's just come out, it's mainly people who are really excited about it want to read it already like the author that sort of thing so it's good that they're still getting good reviews i'll read chapter one and two see what i think but i'm relatively hopeful about this one so we'll see i'm intrigued enough to keep it to give it a good chance at some point we already know a bit about her about her job about where she is what's going on the other people with her and you can already kind of sense a bit of like paranoia in her at everything that's happening and yeah this was really interesting obviously i've only read a little bit of it but i feel like it has enough potential that i'm gonna keep a hold of this one so next one is the glass house um honestly i think i've just got sucked in by how pretty this cover is i don't know if i actually even i'm gonna like this We've got, uh, the truth can shatter everything. When the Harrington family discovers an abandoned baby deep in the woods, they decide to keep her a secret and raise her as their own. But within days, a body is found in the ground of their house and the perfect new family implodes. Years later, Sylvie, seeking answers to nagging questions about her life, is drawn into the wild, beautiful woods where nothing is quite what it seems. Will she unearth the truth? And dare she reveal it? It really doesn't give a lot away. Um, I don't know, honestly. Uh, I think it's really going to depend on kind of like the main age that we're looking at. Um, like our main character and what sort of like personality they have as to like whether I'm going to enjoy this. Because if they're a bit of a wet wipe, I don't think I will. But if like they're actually interesting, then I think it could be good. Um, I'm going to have a look on Goodreads. Okay, so this has got a 4.02 rating on Goodreads, which I think is quite good. No one I follow has, like, rated it, but some people have marked it as to read. I'm not surprised it's not super uh, popular. This cover's well pretty, and it's called The Glass House. It looks like in the US it's called The Daughters of Foxcoat Manor, and the cover of the book doesn't scream read me or scream appealing to be honest um so maybe that's why it's not as good like this is quite recent i'm sure yeah it came out in 2020 i think this is another one where i will read like well how long's the first chapter that's the question yeah okay the first chapter is a good chunk so let's read the first chapter figure out what i think honestly this is one i feel like really could go either way it's one i kind of hope will be good because it's so pretty but I really do think it's going to depend on like the main character and personality so let's give it a go unfortunately this one's not one for me um i had quite high hopes it started with a little like um body found in wood sort of thing and i was like okay this could be interesting then in 1971 the first chapter was set 
and it was all about the nanny and the children and finding this house. I was just like, Ugh. no, not for me. But then chapter two said no, so I started reading it and it was already like weight loss, pregnant children. I was like, no, I'm not gonna read this. I'm never gonna read this. I might as well get rid of it. Um, and for, I think it's one that's probably a good book, like probably actually people like and probably does have like a good reputation from what I could see on Goodreads, like it's rated highly. But it's not something I want to read about and nothing I care about, so it's not for me and I just don't care, honestly. I just don't care. So, the last but one book is The Hypnotist by Lars Kepler. A hospital in Stockholm, Detective Inspector Juna Lena is faced with a boy who witnessed a gruesome murder of his family. He has suffered more than 100 knife wounds and is comatose with shock. Lena is running out of time. The police do not want him on the case. The killer's on the run and there are seemingly no clues. Desperate for information, Lena enlists disgraced specialist Dr. Eric Maria Bark, a hypnotist who vowed never to practice again. As the hypnosis begins, a long and terrifying chain of events unfurls and reverberations far beyond Lena's case. I don't think I'm going to like this honestly. I I don't remember when I brought this but I honestly think it was like 10 years ago. Um, nothing about that sounds good. <laughs> uh, I enjoy t true crime quite a lot, like watching it online, uh, like watching videos whether it be like YouTube or actual like documentaries and from the back like it just sounds like a true crime case in which case like I don't like reading true crime books and obviously it's it's a thriller so it's going to have a bit more to it but I, I don't think I care <laughs> honestly um I just look it's got a 3.75 rating on Goodreads Honestly, I'm not interested. Like, I can't see anyone I know of who's rated it. Um, I'm going to sort it by newest and see what people are giving it now. Okay, it still looks like a few people are reading it. Like, but it's getting between two stars, two and five stars. So, like, not bad. No, I'm not interested. Do you know what? Just put it to the side, Emma. You're not interested. You're not interested. Let's talk about the last book. This is The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. The girl who wouldn't die. Kirby is lucky. She survived the attack. She is sure there were other victims less fortunate, but the evidence she finds is impossible. Hunting a killer who shouldn't exist, Harper stalks his shining girls through the years and cuts the spark out of them. But what if the one that got away came back for him? Basically, the back doesn't sound that interesting. Like, There's really not a lot to go on. I don't know what this is about. But I know that I like the author's writing style. I've really enjoyed what I have read of the other book. So I think I should look on Goodreads. Okay, so this has got a better description here. In the present era of Chicago, Harper Curtis finds the key to a house that opens onto other times. But it comes at a cost. He has to kill the Shining Girls. Bright young women burning with potential. Curtis stalks them through their lives across different eras until in 1989 one of his victims, Kirby Miss Rachi, survives and starts hunting him back. Working with a former homicide reporter who is falling for her, Kirby races against time and reason to unravel an impossible mystery. So people have marked it as to read many years ago but no one's actually read it. Um, like one friend and like two people I follow have all marked it as to read but none of them have read it. Um, I guess I'm going to read the first chapter and see what I think. So that was extremely messed up, extremely weird and I'm extremely hooked already. Um, just the first chapter alone we had like the main character, the stalker guy, approach the other main character as like a little girl I think she said she was like almost seven talk to her like have a conversation and then end that conversation with look out for me I'll be back for you when you're all grown up what okay I'm intrigued like what the fuck's gonna happen 
but then also in like the more like gross like shock factor side of it whilst they're having the conversation like she's got like a circus like a, a kid's playing um and she's got like a little bee under a teacup and he gets the bee and like pulls its wings off and like kills it but it's very descriptive you hear about the popping sounds and all this and that and then he tries to give the bee back to her as a present but she's like it's dead like what and yeah that was the opening chapter and i'm so intrigued and like really yeah we'll definitely be reading this this is definitely in the key pile so that is all the books this was a very short weird video i don't actually know if it's short i've spoke quite a lot but i'm guessing it's going to be a short weird one i am going to get rid of these five books they're not doing it for me i'm not interested i'm not going to read them and i'm going to keep these two books which i think i will enjoy and i think definitely have potential especially this one but i feel like this one could like have a lot of things going for it as well so yeah keeping two of them getting rid of five of them and i'm really happy with that i think this sort of thing like trying first chapters i know i didn't for all of them i know there's a couple that after just looking into them i knew weren't for me but trying first chapters really does help me figure out if i actually do want these books and it's definitely something i'm interested in doing more of in the future like for instance this shelf behind me is all classics and why do i buy them because when i see them cheap in charity shops i'm like well it's a classic of course i'm going to read it am i gonna read it i don't know maybe next time you see one of these videos it'll just be for classics rather than just being for thrillers but for now this has really helped me sort out my books and helped me sort out the pile i do hope you've enjoyed the video i know it's a bit of a weirder one but yeah do give it a like if you liked it subscribe down below if you'd like to see more content like this and hopefully i will see you next time bye